Excuse me. Then up and down and back and forth they drove. The blow was falling so thick and fast that at a distance one would have thought that half a score of men were fighting. I said, excuse me? Thus they fought for nay half an hour until the ground was all plowed up with the digging of their heels and the breathing grew labored like the ox in the furrow. <laughs> what? I'd like some help, please. Oh, right, of course. You want some help. And I'm going to help you just as soon as I get my book. <laughs> Welcome to a likely story. How may I help you this evening? I'm here to buy a book for my son, Timmy. Ooh, how exciting. What kind of books do you like, Timmy? Timmy? Timmy, she's asking you a question. I hate books. Ha <laughs> sure, you don't need that. Don't you have a favorite book at home? Timmy doesn't have any books. No books at all? We always need to buy him one, but we can never make the commitment. Books take up so much room, you know? Yes, well, I'm sure he can find something he'll like. We wouldn't be here at all, except for his teacher to make him write a book report. Ooh, how about mystery? Or maybe science fiction? Wait, I bet you'll love a heartwarming animal story. Take that and that. I don't know why he has to write a book report. Books are so old-fashioned. Oh, but they are not. Books are wonderful. They strengthen your vocabulary. They fuel your imagination. They teach you about other times and other cultures. What do you mean? Well, take this book, for example. Robin Hood. It's about these highway robbers in medieval England. Oh, no. We would never let Timmy read a book like that. We're very careful about what we expose him to. Blam, blam, blam. <laughs> okay, how about this one? White Fang by Jack London. What's that? A book about dentistry? No, it's about this dog named White Fang, see? And he lives in the Yukon. And he gets sold to an Indian named Grey Beaver. And only because he's part wolf that the other dogs refuse to accept him. And then he gets into this fight with a dog named Cherokee. They pounce at each other, slashing, biting, tearing, and pawing. And so Cherokee manages to close his jaws over White Fang's throat. White Fang tries to shake him off, but he doesn't have the strength. And he stumbles to the ground, exhausted. Sounds violent. Die over die. Oh no, it's a good book. Oh no, it's really a very good book. How much is it? Three dollars. I don't know, that seems like an awful lot of money. Would you buy it for two? Come on, Jimmy, let's see what they have at the library. No, no, please just take it. You're giving us the book? Sure, why not? I guess if you don't like it, we can sell it for mine. Yeah, it's for five thousand. <laughs> Bumbarina, don't look at me like that. I had to give it to them. I can't imagine a child not owning a book. Oh, well, might as well close up shop. Doesn't look like we're going to get any more customers anyway. Well, Bumbarina, are you going to come upstairs or are you going to stay down here in guard against burglars? I thought so. You wouldn't be much help against burglars anyway. <laughs> Kids. It feels as though my whole world is spinning. What's the matter, old man? You swing into a tree again? Miss Margie threw my book again. I swear every time she reads me, I end up flying across the room. Uh -huh. I thought you enjoyed flying, my good man. I do. It's the landing I'm not so fond of. Toto, you've got to be quiet. You could wake up Miss Margie. First, yes, you could wake up that cat. Bamboozle-omania. It's pronounced Bomblerina, Heidi. That's what I said. Bamboozle-omania. What's the matter with him? I'm afraid he suffered a traumatic injury to his cranium. My hell! I don't understand a word she says. She means he took a blow to the noggin. Miss Margie threw my book again. Oh, please. You don't know what tossing is until you've been tossed by a tornado. What, what means this word? Tornado? Ooh, ooh, let me explain it. A tornado is a great rush of wind that goes round and round like a freight train, and it sounds like a carnival ride. You know something, Pollyanna? Only you could make a tornado sound fun. Did anyone see if a book was taken? I believe it was White Fang by Jack London. Oh no, not White Fang. I'm gonna miss that a lot. Not me. I'm glad he's gone. He used to chase Toto all around the bookshop. And he was always cheering on my boots. Well, look on the bright side. At least Miss Margie sold another book. But she didn't sell the book, Pollyanna. She gave it away. Miss Margie's got to stop doing that. 
I know. If business doesn't pick up soon, she's going to have to close the bookshop. Oh no! What will happen to us? Who cares about us? It's Miss Margie I'm worried about. Yeah, the shop is her life. Just wish we could help. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't we open a lemonade stand and raise some money for the store? Afraid we can't, Pollyanna. I would violate the two rules that were established for us by the book fairy. Oh no! You said it again! What? Said what? What do you mean? Did somebody call my name? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Book Fairy. Tom, I didn't hear your greeting. Hello, Book Fairy. <laughs> That's better. Now, what do you need my assistance with? No assistance, Book Fairy. Miss Holmes was just explaining to me why we can't open a lemonade stand. Only she hadn't gotten to that part yet. A lemonade stand? Oh, no, no, no. That's simply out of the question. You know the two rules I gave you when I gave you the gift of life. Here it comes. Uh, well, maybe we should go over them one more time. Ooh, I know the first one. I know it. Yes, Pollyanna. Rule number one: No leaving the bookshop. Actually, we're not allowed to leave the building. Miss Margie apart Miss Margie's apartment is right upstairs, and while I don't recommend it, it is fair to Good to know, book fairy. And the second rule, anyone? <sighs> oh, oh, I know, I know. Anyone else, please? Yes, you, Miss Holmes. Rule number two. We must never permit ourselves to be seen or in any way perceived by human beings. A bit worried, but correct. Look, Thomas, if I'm back to Seville's, we wouldn't be here at all. That's right, Heidi. You guys gotta understand. I went way out here for you guys. Yeah. I mean, book characters are supposed to be brought to life the normal way. By being read. Yes, book fairy. fairy. But when I saw that was unlikely to happen here, I decided to step in. <laughs> we know book fairy and we're all very grateful. But can't you make an exception just this once? Absolutely not! Can you imagine the chaos of two minutes that you could vort in your out? No, I must insist. If you break either of the two rules, you will disappear. Forever! Oh, I mean, why would we disappear? How did that work? I don't know, but it wouldn't be good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go find Scarlet O'Hare. I understand she's missing. Oh no, what happened to her? What do you think? She's gone with the wind! <laughs> Can you believe that book, Fairy? She sounds like an old school marm. I know, isn't he wonderful? Oi, stop this! <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Hood, thought I had her. What's this loss? What's this loss? I mean, this is loss. I mean, this is for matter. That foul feline stole my hat. Wait a minute. Don't you steal from the rich. Why, yes, um, it's different. <laughs> so, it's okay to steal as long as you don't keep the stuff for yourself? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's complicated. Not as complicated as you make it out to be. I wouldn't talk, Dorothy. Didn't you swipe the Wicked Witch's shoes? Look, I'm I'm glad you're all so passionate about the subject, but aren't you forgetting something? My hat? No, we have to figure out a way to save the store. Oh yeah. Oh, I remember. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think? How can we help? Well, well if you weren't for that book fairy, 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 It's a brand new day, a day filled with infinite possibilities. Why, today might be the day our business finally turns around. See, Bombrina, we have a customer already. Good morning, I'm so glad you're here. I like this story. No, really, we appreciate all our customers. No, I mean, that's the name of your store, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot. <laughs> Tell me, do you do a lot of, uh, business 
here. Oh, yes, we sell oodles and oodles of books. Well, maybe not oodles, a couple of books here and there. Excellent, excellent. And uh, do you have people come in and look around and just not buy anything? Oh, sure, we get the occasional looky loo, but not very often. Fascinating, simply fascinating. And what about um, police? <laughs> No, I'm here to, um, sell a book. Oh. You do buy books, don't you? Yes, but I prefer to sell them. I make more money that way. <laughs> yes, but you'll want to buy this book. Okay. My grandfather passed it down to me, and he was a general in the Civil War, so... 1,001 vegetable dishes your family will love? Oh, yes. <laughs> You should see some of the recipes. They're oh, amazing. Oh, I'd love to, but there's one problem. What is that? The book has a lock on it. <laughs> so it does. So it does. Do you have the key? I, I sure don't. Then how am I supposed to know what's in it? Oh, I can tell you. On page one, there's a ratatouille, and on page two, there's an amazing green bean casserole that is to die for. Well, I'd love to, but... I'm sorry, but I can't buy this book. Not even a little bit? Not even one corner. Really? My great-great-grandfather would be very disappointed in you. I'm sure he'll get over it. <laughs> you know, on second thought, maybe I will buy a book. <gasps> really? What kind of book would you like to buy? Oh, you know, one with a cover and words inside it. Oh, Moby Dick is an excellent book, and I just adore Robin Crusoe. And you can't go along with little women. Okay, I'll back these up for you. Miss? Miss? Bomberina, did you see where that lady went? Well, that's odd. It's almost as if she didn't want the books at all. Oh, well, it's a brand new day. Still got the day ahead of us. Oh, Bomberina, I'm so tired. Your snoring kept breaking me up last night. <laughs> Would you mind sleeping down here tonight? Oh, you'll be fine. I'll, you'll be fine. It's a lot quieter down here anyway. I'll even get your favorite pillow for you. <sighs> well, Anna, you done scared her off. Right when we were about to spring her attack. Don't tell me you were about to hurt that poor kitty. Uh, no, of course not. We wouldn't dream of it. Then why is there an arrow on the floor? What arrow? That arrow! I, sure, I did aim my bow at the beast, but I didn't mean to harm her. I only wanted to rightfully claim what was mine. You mean your silly hat? I don't find it silly. I think it's rather dashing. This from a guy who wears pajamas all day. <laughs> Hello? What's this? I think that's your arrow, Mr. Hood. Not the arrow. I mean the book. I've never seen it in my life. 1,001 vegetable dishes your family will love? Sounds like a cookbook. Open it up, Mr. Hood. <laughs> Alas, but I wish I could. It seems to have a lock on it. What? Let me see that. Huh. That's really strange. A lock is usually used to secure something of value. Yuck, what's so bad about some old vegetable recipes? My point, exactly. Maybe there's more to recipes inside. Secret message, maybe. Or a treasure map. <gasps> now we have to open it. But how? We don't have the key. If I had my pocket knife, I could bust it open. Well, it's a good thing you don't. You could hurt the poor book. Tom, do you have anything else we could use? Let me see. Three marbles, two pennies, some string, a magnifying glass, and a dead beetle. Ew! It doesn't take a detective to know that none of these items will be effective. What about you, Mr. Hood? Do you have anything in your pockets? Me? I'm from the Middle Ages. I don't even know what a pocket is. <laughs> if I have a long, thin piece of metal, I could fashion myself a lockpick. Oh, I have a 
a hairpin you can use. There you Thank go. Thank you, Pollyanna. This should prove most helpful. Be careful now. You don't want to ruin it. I'm not going to ruin it. I'm just going to insert this in, in here, and yeah, maybe maybe if I do it this way. Uh, nope. No use. We need someone with the proper lock picking experience to get this one open. But who, Miss Holmes? It's not like any of us are criminals. I do know one person who possesses this particular skill. Oh, Fagin! The pickpocket from Oliver Twist? I beg your pardon, my dear, but I'm much more than a pickpocket. I'm a criminal extraordinaire! Enough of your bluster, Fagin. I wouldn't have invited you here at all, except to have a lock that needs picking. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Do you mean to say that even the great Sherlock Holmes is in need of my felonious prohibitions? Just open the lock, would you? <laughs> Certainly I'll open it, but first you must agree to one minor stipulation. Now what might that be? I get half of whatever's inside. But Mr. Fagin, we don't even know what's in there. I'll bet it's a treasure map. Shh. Then I'll get half of the treasure, or you shan't reap the benefits of my talents. One quarter, and only if the treasure can be easily divided. You must take me for a fool. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mr. Fang, I have that thief you've been looking for. Fine, fine, I'll pick the lock but I do so under protest. Do it whatever way you like, just do it. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? Silence, please, I must have absolute silence. Criminals can be quite temperamental. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as the great thief Ali Baba once said, open sesame. Why, it's not a book at all. It's a place to hide valuables. And what a valuable, a diamond necklace. Hand it over, Fagin. But you said I could have half. I said one quarter and only if the treasure be easily divided. Clearly this necklace cannot. This is not fair, I say. Not fair. I did a dishonest day's work. I expect a dishonest day's pay. Come on, Robin. Let me get rid of this thief before he steals anything else. Oh, woe is me. Woe is me. Always cheated out of my unfair share. <laughs> hey, you swipe my pennies. Curious thing indeed. Who hid it there, Miss Holmes? I can't say, but I do know one thing for certain. The necklace was stolen. <gasps> oh. What clue tipped you off? Did you find a suspicious hair inside the compartment? Or a fingerprint? Once a class? Not at all. I saw a story about it on the news. <laughs> <laughs> if Miss Margie gets caught with a stolen necklace, she'll be thrown in jail for sure. <gasps> we have to warn her. But how? I'll deliver. Look, sunlight is coming soon. We have to clean this place up. No, 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 we can't. Miss Marjorie will be coming down the stairs soon. If she catches even a glimpse of us, we will all be kaput. But, but we made such a mess. Just leave it. When she sees the necklace, she'll know what to do. Come on, guys. We have to skedaddle. Right there. 
What, behind the cat? No, she is the cat. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I'm not going to arrest the cats. Then why are you here? Don't tell anyone, but I'm looking for a pack of jewel thieves. <gasps> jewel thieves! Shh, shh, keep it down. Jewel thieves? Who told you? You did. <laughs> well, uh, don't tell anyone. Keep it under your hat, okay? Okay. Right. Do you know what the thieves look like? No, all I know is they've been smuggling jewels out of the country from a number of jewelry stores. I mean, I don't know how they're smuggling them. Oh, how exciting! It's just like a mystery novel! This is nothing like a mystery novel, man. Your very knife could be in danger. What? Did I say knife? I meant life. Your very <laughs> life could be in danger. Oh, dear! Uh, have you seen any suspicious activity lately? Well, I did have a very well-dressed young woman come in and try to sell me a book that she couldn't unlock. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about criminals. I'm talking about thieves. I'm talking about people with bad teeth and horrible scars. I thought you didn't know what they looked like. Oh, come on. All criminals have bad teeth and horrible scars. Well, I'll keep a lookout for them. You do that. It's citizens like you who are the mouth and stomach of the police force. Don't you mean the eyes and ears of the police force? Not when it's time for lunch. I'm starving. <laughs> oh, Bombrina, did you hear that? Jewel thieves! Oh, how I'd wish they'd come here. I'd give them a good drubbing, like, drubbing with my quarterstaff, just like Robin has used to. Oh, ho! Oh, well, I meant I'd better get these things out of the way. But first thing tomorrow, I want you to return them to whomever you stole them from. Hey, Eddie, is this the place? Sure looks like it. I mean, it's got books and everything. I thought we was looking for jewels. You meatball, we are looking for jewels. The jewels are inside the book. Well, how'd they get in there? Let me go over this. One more time. <laughs> Step one, Lady in Red steals the diamond necklace. Step two, Lady in Red puts the diamond necklace inside the book. Step three, she sells the book to the used bookstore. Step five, we buy the book from the used bookstore. <laughs> Step four, we give the book to the boss. That's a lot of steps. It's for the boss's protection. He doesn't want the lady in red to know who he is in case she gets caught. Oh, okay. Hey, wait a minute. What if we get caught? Who cares? We ain't doing nothing illegal. We're just buying a book. I guess you're right. Well, there sure are a lot of books here. How are we supposed to know which one has the jewels? The boss told me to look for one book in particular. He made me repeat the title over and over again so I'd remember it. Oh, yeah, so what's the title? I forget. But I do know the book has a lock on it. Hmm. How about this one, Eddie? Trezor Iceland. It looks like a mine of jewels, isn't it? Does it have a lock on it? No. Then that ain't it. Oh, can I help you? You the book lady? I'm the proprietor of this bookshop. Yes. Well, my name's Eddie, and this here's my business partner, Fingers. Oh, what type of business are you in? Business. Yes, if you are business partners, you must be in some type of business. Hey, Fingers, she wants to know what business we're in. Monkey. Ha! <laughs> she means we import monkeys. And export them. That's right, import and export. We send them out and we bring them right back. <laughs> the same monkeys? Oh, yeah. Monkeys are very active creatures. They don't like to do a lot of sitting around. We was hoping you could help us find a book. Well, you've come to the right place. I've got thousands of books. You see, we're looking for one book in particular. What's the name of it? We don't know. Can you tell me what it's about? Oh, about this thing. No, no, I mean what's inside. It's contents. Oh, jewels. What? Oh, oh she means a book. It's so well written. It's like a jewel. It's got good words and stuff. <laughs> um, okay. Is, uh, could this be the book? Nope. <laughs> Is there something wrong with the book? Yeah, it opens too easily. It <laughs> opens too easily? We're looking for a book that don't open. Then how are you gonna read it? <laughs> We're not gonna read it. We're gonna smuggle it. What? Snuggle. She means snuggle. Hold it close to our cheeks. <laughs> You should just look for the book yourself. We can, we can do that. Of course you can. Just make sure you put the books away when you're done. You got it, book lady. This ain't it. 
I mean, this ain't it either. Nope. Not even close. Hey, Abby, how are you finding it? Well, keep looking. It's got to be around here somewhere. We're doing just like you said. We're looking for a book. But you're throwing them on the floor. I told you to put them away when you're done. Well, you see, that's the thing. We ain't done yet. <laughs> Stop! Don't you know you could damage them that way? Just books. Yeah, they like they got any feelings. <laughs> get out! What? I said get out. But we ain't found what we're looking for. I don't care. I can't have you ruining my books. Hey, Abby, maybe we should get out. All right. Mark my words, book lady. We'll be back. Oh, Bombrina, thank you for chasing away those horrible people. I guess you're a lot braver than I thought. In fact, you're so brave, I'm gonna have you sleep down here from now on. <laughs> well, well, sure, you heard those two brutes. They could come back at any time. Types. They read so much their brains turn to mush. You got that already. I never read a book in my life, but look at how I turned out. Please, I'm trying not to look at you. So where do you think this book is at? I don't know. How about you go search on that side of the store, and I'll search on this side of the store. And this time, put your books back so that the book lady doesn't know we was here. You got it, Eddie. Yeah! Ouch. What's your problem? I got bit by a mosquito. Are you crazy? <laughs> there ain't no mosquitoes in here. <laughs> if you say so, Eddie. <laughs> What's your problem? Seven fifty fat ain't a mosquito. Yeah, it's called a stupid bug. Now shut your yap. <laughs> Yo! What are you doing over here? I'm helping you look for the book over here. Look, don't. You're supposed to be looking over there. I don't like that high on the floor. It hurts. If you don't get over there, right now, I'm going to hurt you myself. All right. I have to. <laughs> Hey, Abby, did you say the book we was looking for had a lock on it? Only about a million times. Was it called 1001 Vegetable Dishes Your Family Will Love? Yeah, how'd you know? Well, because I'm holding it right now. What? Let me see that. Huh. Yeah, that's the book, all right. Yeah, there's a lock and there's a secret compartment. But, but, but where are the jewels? I don't know. Maybe they fell out. Look around. Well, I'm not finding them. Maybe they're invisible. The boss is not going to have us deliver an invisible necklace. How would he know we delivered it to him? How would he know if we didn't? <laughs> got bats in your belfry. <laughs> hey, now that I think about it, that book lady was acting kind of suspicious like. I bet she picked the lock and took the necklace for herself. So what are we going to do about it? What do you think we're going to do? We're going to come back here tomorrow and make her hand over the necklace. Oh, come on, let's go. Da! What did you do that for? Oh, I didn't do that! Yes, you, I knew you I did not do anything! <laughs> oh, this is bad. This is very, very bad. I knew Miss Margie liked the back of my perfectly muscled hand. She would never steal the necklace. Well, then who did? 
I wonder. Do you think there's any way we could help her? She recognized that the necklace was stolen and returned it to the proper authorities. But if Miss Marty doesn't have the necklace, when those thugs come back, they might do something terrible. Have no fear. I am the finest swordsman in all of England. I shall cut them to pieces. That won't work. We can't let ourselves be seen. I have an idea. Why don't we write Miss Margie a note? Sure, and we can sign it from the characters inside your book. I promise this is right. We can't give ourselves a bed. No, but we could sign it from a concerned friend. Miss Margie will never know it came from us. Brilliant suggestion, Dorothy. Oh, but who shall serve the scribe? Don't look at me. Sounds too much like school. Ooh, I will. I have the best penmanship in my class. Of course you do. Okay, are you I'm ready? ready. Now, write down exactly what I say. Dear Miss Marjorie, we do not wish to alarm you. Have you gotten mad? Of course we wish to alarm her. That's the whole point of writing the note. <laughs> Dear Miss Marjorie, we wish to alarm you. As there are a pair of scuff laws. The word is Brathians. Bad guys. <laughs> which shall return tomorrow to retrieve an item they misplaced. Miss Lay. Lost. Please be on your guard as they may cause you a grievous affliction. Great injury. Harm. There, do you have that? I think so. Great. Leave it there on the counter where Miss Margie can see it. I think I've rather well written, don't you? Well, it's not quite as gripping as an Arthur Conan Doyle story, but it. I'm, I could have sworn I locked the door last night. I guess I was so flustered by those two brutes. I totally forgot. Oh well, it's a brand new day. Time to put that behind us. Well, 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 if it ain't the book, lady. I thought I told you two to get out of here. Oh, you might have said that. The thing is, we don't hear so good, do we? Fingers. Huh? See? <laughs> What do you want? Oh, just to come back and get a little something that's ours, that you seem to think is yours. But I don't know what you're talking about. Show our fingers. Did you take this? What? The picture? No, the necklace that's in the picture! I've never seen it before in my life. Come on. We know you found this book, that you picked the lock and you took the necklace for yourself. So. Where is it? I didn't! I swear I didn't! Playing dumb, huh? Well, maybe you'll get some smarts if we rough you up a little. Rough me up all you'd want. I don't have the necklace. Fingers, that ain't no good. If you want to get her to talk, you gotta rough up something she really cares about. Like what? Like books. Wait, what do you mean? Where's the necklace? <laughs> Hurt it. I'm just bending it a little. <laughs> now, you gonna tell us where it is, or ain't you? Uh, sure, I'll get you the necklace. I just don't have it right now. All right. I'll give you one day. But if the necklace, by tomorrow, isn't back inside this book, I'm gonna come back and do the rest to all of these. Oh, Bombrina. I... Oh, Bombrina, there's no time for that now. I gotta go find a necklace that looks just like this one in the picture. Maybe if I buy it and give it those, to those two brutes, they'll think it's the one they lost. You'll be all right here alone, won't you? Oh, you'll be fine. Now, now remember, ma make sure that you give each customer their major credit card. <laughs> Excuse me. Make sure you give each customer the receipt and we don't take, we take all major credit cards but no out of town checks. Bye-bye.
here for now. We don't want to aggravate his injury. Let's set her down here. <laughs> Are you feeling okay, Miss Holmes? My back, doctor, it's killing me. I'm sure it is. After all, you have a broken spine. <laughs> I'm afraid not, Dorothy. Whenever one of my usual patients has broken spine, I usually just put them to sleep. <laughs> that's terrible! Isn't that what you do with horses? Precisely. That's what we get for calling Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> you know something, Miss Holmes? I think I can fix your spine with just a few drops of glue. That's not use, Dorothy. This bag will take. More than glue to fix. I'm done for. I'm not gonna put the glue on your spine. I'm gonna put it on your book like this. There we go. Ah, yeah, that feels better. Ooh. Are you sure? Yes, I'm going quite back to normal. Thank you, Dorothy. Yay! I knew you'd get well. And not a moment too soon. What do you mean? Um. Um, did you see that Miss Margie is going to have horrible things happen to her if she doesn't get the necklace back? Well, Those bugs are going to come after her. Well, we have to get the necklace back to her. Because if she doesn't have the necklace, when those thugs come back, they might do something terrible. Look, the Well, it's worse than that. We are liable to be torn page from page if we don't get the necklace back. Oh no, I don't want my spine to be good broken, Snapper. <laughs> I think Miss Margie never got her note. But so she she didn't know that we we're gonna come back because she never saw the note. Well, where did it go? I don't know. Well, I suggest we question the one creature we all know to be a criminal. Bombarina. We just want to talk to you. You're scaring her. Let me talk to her. Ladies, I speak to a cat. I will talk to her. Tell her we're looking for a stolen necklace. Bombarina. Meow, 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 meow. Tell her if we don't find it, those dogs are going to destroy all the books. Meow, 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 meow. She says she doesn't have it. Ask her if she's laid eyes on it anywhere. Meow, meow, meow. She says she doesn't have it. Tell her she actually hasn't seen a tiger. We'll have to look for it. Who believes her? Well, if the scurvy beast won't tell you, make her what? The plank! We don't have a plank. We're in a bookshop. Then off with her head! I dare say, madam. You have frightened her off. Oh, it's no use anyway. She would never admit to the crime. Oh, please. Bombarina didn't steal the necklace. It's not like her to steal something so valuable. That's right. Well, then, it's got to be around here somewhere. <laughs> spread out and look for Good it. Good idea. Spread out and look for it. Surely one of us will find where it is. It would just go a lot <laughs> Quicker if we just cut everyone's heads off. I say cut their heads off and make them walk the play. I'm afraid that's a physical possibility, my good sir. Well, someone ought to lose their head. You know, I'm a bit concerned about your preoccupation with violence. Could be a sign of something more serious. Could you stop by my office sometime for a consultation? Wait, aren't you an animal doctor? Indeed, I am, madame. Do I look like an animal to you? No, but you don't look quite human either. Of course not, on a playing card. But what kind of doctor do you want to see? A cardiologist! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> By Joe! What is it, Mr. Holmes? There is a veritable treasure trove of Belford items in his cat bed. <gasps> look at that. Robin's hat. My lucky! My lucky rabbit's foot. I don't know. Maybe she was going to give it all to the poor. Well, I'm poor, so I'm taking all this back. <laughs> oh, look at this. What's that? That's the note we wrote to Miss Margie. Oh, so no wonder she didn't know that the thieves were going to come back. She never got the note. Is the diamond necklace there? Not that I can see. 
Then what happened to it? Elementary, my dear Dorothy? I have no idea. <laughs> what are you guys still doing here? It's on a stay break! Do you want to play a game of croquet real quick? So long as I can use my buddy's pig leg. <laughs> Are you still here? We've got to hit the room. All right, all right. You and the white rabbit always in a rush. Why didn't I listen to my mother and choose an easier field like teeth? Oh. Lock the door? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Maybe if it looks like we went out of business, those two of them will go away. It's <laughs> a little early to be locking up, ain't it? Oh, not at all. It's National Book Lovers Day. The, you know, all the day people all over the country stay home and read a book. Hey, that sounds like a great idea. And I know just a book I'd like to read. It's a book about vegetables. Oh, you don't want that. How about a book like Crime Never Pays or 20,000 Years in Sing Sing? Nope, it has to be a vegetable book. There's a recipe I'm really interested in. It involves a lot of ice. Hey, Eddie, I don't think ice is a vegetable. Shut up, you're ruining my metaphor. <laughs> so, here it is. Oh, wait, let me explain. No explanation is necessary. Either your necklace is in here, or it ain't. And look at that. The book lady delivered. What? Oh, right. Of course I did. Why wouldn't I? All right, fingers. Let's get these rocks to the boss. Wait, what happened to the ice? Ice, rocks, they're all the same thing. You want to know something, Eddie? Sometimes you make no sense. <laughs> Phew, Bombrina. I don't know how the necklace got in there, but I'm glad it did. Now I finally have a chance to fix that Sherlock Holmes book. Well, that's odd. It looks perfectly fine. I could have sworn the spine was broken. Hey, what's the big idea? Why, what do you mean? These rocks is fake. See, they fog up when I breathe on them. So, where's the real necklace? I don't know, I never had it. Fingers, pick a book. Which book should I grab, Eddie? Oh. I don't care, just pick one. How about this one? Marie Poppins. <laughs> sure. You gonna tell us where the necklace is? No, I told you. I don't. I never had it. Pick another one. Hey, this one's got a funny name. Dawn Quick Saudi. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Pick another one. <laughs> hey, I actually know this one. Heidi! Oh, no. Stop you fail this friend! Whoa! Who are you? Only the greatest outlaw in all the land. Al Capone? No, Robin Hood. Boy, you really need to read more. Now please put my book down. You're making me nervous. Oh. Hey, Eddie, I don't like this. Let's go. No, not until we get the real necklace. You know, <laughs> oh, on second thought, maybe we should leave. <laughs> oh no, you don't yeah, leave. Right, 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 right. Oh, my God. Who cares if you're better than here? Yeah, Tomo! Ah. <laughs> 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 That's my friend too! <laughs> I thought I'd be glad to see you here. Yeah? Well, I still want those shoes back. We give up! Oh. We give up! Come on, frankly, they already surrendered. Only if we had something to tie him up with. Right here, you, partner. Learn to pop your head. Yeah. <laughs> 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 How long do you need help? Alaska. <laughs> Thanks, Hopalong. You keep Justin in the nick of time.
time. Oh, I always come just in the nick of time, little lady. I just wish the nick of time had come a little earlier. Could somebody call the police? <laughs> uh, uh, Frankie, why don't I make the call? <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy! Hey! Tom? Come on. You bet we're real. As real as the books we came from. But what are you doing here? It's simple, partner. It's all the book fairy's idea. Did somebody call my... Whoa! Colts, Colts, Colts! What is happening? <laughs> you made this happen? Me? <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far. Sure it was you. You're the one that brought us all to life. Only you told us to lay low. You said. We fear this will be the end of us. We gave up our lives to save you, Miss Maggie. Yeah. We just wish we could have helped you save the story. Oh, don't, don't worry about that. I'm just so excited you're here. <laughs> oh, no. What? What's the matter? I don't know. Something seems to be tugging on me. Huh. Well, that's how that works. Yeah, well, that works. <laughs> this bell, of course. Dorothy. And the rest of them, they're gonna disappear now. Horses! <laughs> and I just got here. Did you do something, Book Fairy? I'm sorry, it's out of my hands now. <laughs> Even I can't put a positive spin on this. Oh, yeah, now! to read them and bring them to life. Well, how would that ever happen? Hardly anyone comes to the store. And when they do, they don't buy anything. Oh, Margie, you gotta have faith. Maybe one day, if you truly believe. Uh-oh, someone's coming. I've gotta go. I don't see anyone. Wow, that dude's all like a flash. Just like yesterday, they were here. 